Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask the intercession of our Blessed Virgin Mary in this Eucharist. Let us ask her to lead us closer to her Son, Jesus. Let us now call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, now there is no condemnation 
for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed you from the law of sin and death. For what the law, weakened by the flesh, was powerless to do, this God has done by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for the sake of sin, He condemns sin in the flesh, so that the righteous decree of the law might be fulfilled in us, who live not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, are concerned with the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, with the things of the Spirit. The concern of the flesh is death, but the concern of the Spirit is life and peace. For the concern of the flesh is hostility toward God. It does not submit to the law of God, nor can it, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also. Through His Spirit, that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's and the earth are its fullness. The world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Please so stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. He said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, 
they were greater sinners than all other Galileans. By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower of si at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree and have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, in the second part of our Gospel today, Jesus narrates the parable of the fig tree that has no fruit. And because it does not bear fruit, the owner wants to cut it down. Wala namang silbi, putulin na lang. But the gardener made an appeal. He promised the owner that he will pay more attention to that tree, that he will take care of it, hoping that one day it will bear fruit. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a lot to learn from this gardener. This gardener did not simply say, yes, let us just cut it down. Anyway, that tree is useless. Hindi niya sinabing, o oh, sige, putulin na nga. Bawas din yan sa trabaho ko. He did not even blame the tree. Hindi niya sinabing, o oh, wala namang silbi yan. Kaya putulin na lang. The gardener recognized that there is a problem. The tree does not bear fruit. And as gardener, he would, he would have probably asked, what can I do to make this tree bear fruit? He looked for a solution, and he made himself part of that solution. I will take care of this tree. I will cultivate the ground. I will fertilize it so that it may bear fruit in the future. My dear brothers and sisters, this gardener is Jesus. In our first reading today, St. Paul tells us that there is no judgment, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus came not to blame us. Jesus came not to condemn us. Jesus came in order to look for a solution to the sinfulness of humanity. And Jesus 
even made himself part of that solution by offering his life for our salvation. By doing that, Jesus is the solution. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, many times when things go wrong in our life, we always blame others. We easily point fingers on other people and we pass the responsibility to others. Kaya pumalpak yan, kasalanan nyo. Kayo ang dapat gumawa ng solusyon dyan. Kayo ang mamroblema dyan. When lives of other people become like this fig tree in Jesus' parable, when life, the life of other people become fruitless, senseless, napapariwara ang buhay, minsan sinisisi pa natin sila. Kaya nagkaganyan ng buhay mo dahil din naman sa'yo. Pagkukulang mo yan, kasalanan mo yan. But do we even ask, what can I do in order to make things better? What can I contribute in order to make this tree, this life, fruitful? How can I be part of the solution? My dear brothers and sisters, when the fig tree is fruitless, let us stop blaming. Let us be part of the solution. At yun ang maganda. Huwag nang dumagdag sa problema. Maging bahagi ng solusyon. Magaling tayong manisi, magturo, magpasa ng responsibilidad sa kapwa. Pero bilang mga Kristiyano, sana maging bahagi tayo ng solusyon. In the experience of this pandemic, it is so easy to blame other people. It is so easy to blame institutions. But how are we making ourselves part of the solution? Alam niyo po, dito sa Manila Cathedral, sa ating live streaming ng ating misa, kami naman po ay hindi trained na mga technician ng mga live streaming. Hanggang ngayon, pinag-aaralan pa rin po namin ito. And many times, we experience technical difficulties. And when we experience these difficulties, we receive so many messages and calls. But you know, it makes us happy when people would ask, Parang nagka-problema po yung live streaming kanina. May kakilala po ako na magaling sa ganyan. Baka makatulong po. Instead of simply blaming us, they become part of the solution. They do not just point out the problem. They make themselves part of the solution. My dear brothers and sisters, when the fig tree is fruitless, stop blaming, stop judging, stop passing the responsibility to others. Ask, how can I be part of the solution? And if you cannot be part of the solution, please just don't add to the problem. Please all stand. God is patient and aware of our miseries. 
Let us pray to Him to help us on the way to conversion and renewal. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That our church leaders may inspire us to a more fervent devotion to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our community may bear the fruits of prayer and penance and face the judgment seat of God with sincere and humble hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. That we may bring warmth to those whose hearts are empty and cold. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who suffer may have the strength to reach out for the Lord who is always near. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the dead may see the face of Jesus and remain in His presence forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us also pray for the people who requested our prayers and for the intentions offered in this Mass. Loving Father, receive the prayers of a penitent people who come before you in humility and faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, in humble praise as we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word and my, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please all stand. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may by imitating her serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for joining us in this Mass this morning. We especially greet the sisters of the Shervas de San Jose and the staff, the personnel of Talleres de Nazareth in Quezon City and in Mandaluyong who are joining our Mass this morning as we commemorate today the 10th anniversary 
of the canonization of St. Bonifacia Rodriguez de Castro, the foundress of the Shervas de San Jose. We ask the inter intercession of uh, St. Bonifacia so that our brothers and sisters who are working in the talleres and our sisters of the Shervas de San Jose may always be faithful to their mission. We also invite you to visit our Blessed Souls Chapel, the second chapel to your right, where the blood relic of St. John Paul II is still available for veneration. Yesterday, we celebrate his feast day, and today and tomorrow, the relic will be available for veneration of the faithful. Please come and visit him and offer prayers to him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Maria, in the name of